There has been a lot of discussion on what destroyed Thomas the Tank Engine. Some say it was Magic Railroad, some say it was the Hit Era, some say it was CGI, some people say it was All Engines Go. I don't know who created Pokemon Go. But I think the thing that undeniably 100% killed Thomas was the Bible. No, <laughs> not the Christian Roman Catholic Bible. I mean the actual show Bible. There are currently two publicly known Bibles from Thomas. There's the Bible that was written in March of 2003. Actually, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about it was because the Bible turns 20 years old exactly this month. And there was also the Ark Productions Bible. Unfortunately, this Bible is not available. However, there is this image that was posted in November of 2017. Of course, if I were to speculate, I would say there are most definitely more Bibles from Thomas. But unfortunately, the only ones available as of the date of this video is the one that was leaked from 2003. The show Bible was actually leaked by Ben Gosling. This was the source to so many questions that we had wondered, like why were the characters betrayed in a certain way? You know, uh, why was Emily Bossy? Why was Sir Handel old? You know, why was Edward weak? Why was Henry worried? All these like weird anomalies that were in the hit era were seemingly answered in this one show Bible. And so, today I'm going to go through the Bible and find out exactly why this Bible destroyed Thomas. Thomas and Friends, Bible, a working progress. <laughs> you can say that again. Setting, the island of Sodor. Sodor is analogous to the world a child might build around a set of train tracks. Okay, interesting. It has certain physical features such as Brend Ham Docks, okay, Tidmouth Sheds, Gordon's Hill, the Viaduct, the Quarry, Thomas's Branch Line, and all the stations with Geoffrey Marshall. <laughs> the main line is, as the name suggests, the main line, okay. <laughs> Branch lines can have sidings, small sections of track running nowhere, railway parking spaces. <laughs> no. Oh dear. <laughs> Rule 55. You can't do it. The narrow gauge world is small in every sense of the word. Hmm. Not really. I mean, th th isn't the narrow gauge railway actually huge and like awe inspiring despite the engines being so little? Not small because everything's tiny? <sighs> there are seven narrow gauge engines Sir Handel, Duncan, Duke, Peter Sam, Rusty, Reneus, and Scarloe. Uh, okay, I'm guessing Bertram and Smudger are just dead then, okay. <laughs> Main characters! The steam engines are like children in a playground, with Sir Topham Hatt as the adult. I mean, yeah, I, I guess I can sort of see that allegory. Though the engines are generally the same age, it's clear that Gordon is older than Thomas. Uh, I'm pretty sure... Thomas is actually older than Gordon, but I mean, I guess they're going for the more metaphorical, like age is sort of a metaphor thing where like Thomas is kind of the young one and Gordon's kind of the old father figure. So it's interesting that this Bible seems to imply that age is more of a construct with the engines rather than the actual build dates being accurate. Okay, so that's, that's, that's kind of interesting. Whatever their age, all the steam engines are basically good nature and well behaved. Diesels, however, are another matter. Uh, Okay, <laughs> I'm starting to understand the <laughs> underlying tones of racism here now. Work is central to how the engines see themselves. Thomas loves being sent on specials. Oh god, this is where that comes from. Percy loves taking the mail. Oh, Gordon's pride is strongly rooted in taking the express. Oh my god. Thomas loves being special. Percy loves taking the mail. Gordon is the pride of the line. Blah, 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 blah. There is no higher honor than being told by Sir Topham Hatt, you are a really useful engine. Oh god, that's where that line comes from. Oh my god. It all, it all makes sense now. Jomish, you are a really useful engine. Whatever the story, lessons are learned, humility and fairness triumphs, and everyone is friends again by bedtime. Well, gee, ain't that just swell? I'm surprised they're going to start singing Come By All while we're at it. Who needs realistic expectations? Steam engines only have two natural foes, troublesome trucks, who are a nuisance to everyone, and diesel, except the good diesels. Oh, well, thanks for telling us that there are good diesels. Jesus, what is this? <laughs> Thomas. Thomas, a cheeky, friendly, reliable engine, is our central character. Thomas is our hero, our every engine. 
kind, with a strong sense of right and wrong, Thomas is also playful, unafraid of Gordon, Henry, or any of the larger engines, and is very good friends with Percy. Okay, so this is interesting. This kind of explains why Thomas, the character himself, became a lot more neutered in this era, because classic Thomas was always very bold and naughty and, you know, would literally call characters fat, whereas here they made him into a more sort of generic, friendly, every engine sort of character. Um, which I guess makes sense for the protagonist of the show, but still it is a little weird considering Thomas's history as a character. Percy is vulnerable, suggestible, and open to teasing. I, I would say that's true, yeah. He he's Thomas's best friend and equivalent to the youngest child in the playground. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Insecure and protective of his favorite work, taking the mail. Percy is one of the most popular of all Thomas characters. Yeah, okay, I think that's a good cementation of Percy. He works mainly in the mines and the quarries around the island, and is consequently not the cleanest engine in the shed. Dirty Percy, as he has been called. Don't call me Dirty Percy! I love the fact that they reference Dirty Percy in the Bible. That is so funny. It's like, it was almost like as if they were ahead of the memes. That's so interesting. James. James is fabulously narcissistic. Okay. He is an all-purpose engine, which means he works on both main and branch lines, pulling trucks and occasionally smaller coaches. He's the same size as Edward, with a coal tender at the rear, which means he can't shunt? Um, wasn't that the plot of, uh, Trouble in the Shed? He is the closest thing Thomas and Friends has to a rebel, capable of refusing to do things and showing off for the sake of it. James is never dull and brings a colour and attitude wherever he goes. Hmm, I actually must say that's a pretty good description of James, I will admit, yeah. Gordon is pompous, self-satisfied and large. <laughs> He's a blue mainline engine with a coal tender, identical to Henry? I mean, not quite, but Gordon is pompously causing problems and is a good source of stories. Okay, again, another good description for the characters, uh, although I don't think this trend will keep up. <laughs> Toby. Toby is the oldest and wisest principal character. He was rescued from the scrap heap by Sir Topham Hatt. He's even more vulnerable and sickly than Henry. Because as a tram, he isn't as fast or strong as even the smaller engines. I, I mean, yeah, he is small and technically slower, but he's never been vulnerable or sickly. Like, what? In the past, Toby's appearance has been a cause for common teasing, which has created opportunities for an important Thomas and Friends rule to be retained. Looks are not as important as what's on the inside. I mean, no. When has Toby ever been teased? I mean, I guess they're referring to that scene in Dirty Objects where James belittles Toby, but like that's really the only time Toby's appearance has ever been belittled. Like every other time, Toby doesn't give a damn what people think about him. What? Henry is a warrior. He is an engine hypochondriac who has to burn special coal. Every word of what you just said was wrong. <laughs> Henry's a worrier, is he? I mean, he has worried in the past, but like, he's not a worrier. Oh my god, this this whole thing is literally the source of every problem. This is what I mean by when this Bible has literally destroyed everything about Thomas, because it just got so many things wrong with the characters. Could you imagine if this Bible had literally just gotten some things right? Like, if they'd actually gotten Henry's characterization right, then literally, in the whole hit era, Henry would have been in character. So, Henry is a worrier. He's an engine hypochondriac who burns special coal. Now, I'm guessing either they watched the episode Coal and just assumed that he needed to burn it and just never realized that he got his shape changed, or I, I wonder if that m reference in Magic Railroad had something to do with it. I don't know. I do like the, the, how they mention here he's a little vain, so I guess that's where that part of his character still kind of shines true in the hit era. He's also superstitious and is easily spooked. I. <sighs> 
when was Henry ever like that? I've got a very strong feeling that the specific episodes that they picked out just so happened to be the episode Haunted Henry. And so because Henry was acting scared in that episode, the person who wrote this Bible must have gone, oh, well, Henry's like this all the time. Not taking into account that the vast majority of Henry actually wasn't like this. That's my theory on it anyway. Because they do reference Haunted Henry later on in this Bible. So perhaps that's exactly what happened. Yeah, okay, so yeah, here it is, Wellsworth Station and Yards. Uh, several branch lines lead away from the yards into the wider countryside and spooky areas. Henry was frightened away, often thinks he sees ghosts along these lines. Okay, so the fact that they, that's definitely a reference to Haunted Henry. And the fact that they said in the Bible that Henry was a warrior, I am absolutely convinced that they watched Haunted Henry and then they just assumed that that was what Henry's character was and put it in the Bible. And now, because of that one episode, Henry is forever ruined as a character. Oh my god, I cannot believe that. Okay, Edward. Edward is a frail and vulnerable engine? No, he isn't. <laughs> the same size and shape as James, but the same color as Gordon. Edward is a mainline engine. Uh, no, he isn't. <laughs> Um, he pulls both trucks and smaller coaches and is often used as a back engine. Okay, I mean, that's technically correct. Edward was the second engine on the Isle of Sutter. Okay, that's interesting. But unlike Gordon, age doesn't mean dominance. It means vulnerability. Since when was Edward ever vulnerable about his age? I thought the whole point of Edward's exploit was that, despite being old, Edward could still prove himself. Edward doesn't view himself as frail. It's the other way around. It's, it's the other engines who view Edward as frail and vulnerable and always belittle him, but Edward always proves that, that he still has it. Edward never views himself as a vulnerable character who can't do it. He, he always, like, persists and... This is not Edward. What are you talking about? Like Henry, Edward is not as prominent as some of the other characters, but he shouldn't be overlooked. If a scene is set in the shed, the likelihood is Henry and Edward are there too, and where possible and appropriate, they should be given a line. Oh, wow. <laughs> Take notes, big world adventures. <laughs> Emily. Emily is a little Miss Bossy Buffers, who thoroughly enjoys being Emily. When was Emily ever portrayed as being bossy? She was portrayed as being a, a motherly, kind figure who always looked out for the engines. The only time I can ever think of Emily being bossy in the classic series was when she was reprimanding Thomas and Percy. And she was doing that because they were bullying Salty. She isn't bossy at all. Roughly Thomas's age, she feels slightly older than Thomas and definitely older than Percy. Okay, that's a bit weird. I'm pretty sure Emily was built in like in the 18 somethings and Thomas was built in like the 1912s or something. How are they the same age? I mean, I guess, I guess mentally speaking, they're like the same age. Like they're kind of meant to be kind of like brother and sister. I wonder if this is meant to represent like female puberty or something. Like, you know the way girls, when they hit puberty, they tend to hit it a lot younger than boys. So they tend to start acting a lot more mature while the boys kind of stay the same. I wonder if that's the sort of dynamic they were going for with Emily and Thomas, where they're both technically the same age, but because she's slightly more pubescent, she's a lot more mature and than Thomas would be. I, I wonder if that's what they were going for. If she were in a playground, she'd organize the younger kids into playing her game. I, I wonder if they, like, watched that episode where, like, Thomas and Percy were being, like, rude to Salty, and then they just made that her entire personality? Because I get the feeling that a lot of this stuff is sort of cherry-picked from very specific moments in the show, rather than taking into account the whole mosaic of characters. Because if they'd taken it all into account, then they would have said that Emily was a very uh, caring character. Additional characters. Uh, Bill and Ben. Bill and Ben are twins and true children. Highly competitive with each other, prone to jealousy and bickering. They have an outspoken dislike of Diesels, except Mavis, Boko, and a reluctant admiration of Salty. Oh yeah, they totally hate Diesels, uh, apart from, you know, all the Diesels they work with. <laughs> <laughs> it's also funny that they don't mention Paxman here, or Derek. Does that mean that they canonically still don't like Derek? Harvey. Harvey is big-hearted and relentlessly cheerful. He is a mainline worker, but because of his shape, doesn't fit into Tidmouth sheds and has to park parallel. So, is it canon that Harvey's crane, because it's so high, he literally can't fit in Tidmouth sheds, or 
are they saying as a metaphorical thing like oh he doesn't fit in or whatever he's happy working in the yard the docks and the building sites but his true home is the Sodor Waterworks? Uh, was this ever a thing in the show? I don't think a waterworks was even mentioned in the show. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense since he was often seen around Brendam Docks, so I'm guessing maybe there's a waterworks canonically at Brendam Docks or something that we just don't know about. Donald and Douglas, another set of twins, but this time Scottish. Despite their jealousy, they're loyal to each other and capable of great bravery. The thing about Donald and Douglas is that they were always sort of treated as two different characters in the classic series. But then after the episode Twin Trouble, they just started being like paired together. They, they were just thought of as the one character. You know, unlike Bill and Ben, who are very much basically the same character, Donald and Douglas are actually quite different. This is, they're not like Bill and Ben at all. Stepney. Stepney is a late addition to the railway, rescued from the dreaded scrapyard. He does not bed down in the shed, he does not carry passengers, and has no coaches. Uh, <laughs> I think he does have a shed, he does carry passengers, and he does have coaches. What are you talking about? <laughs> no wonder he didn't appear with any coaches in the Rosie episode, oh my god. <laughs> Duck! Oh my god, Duck is actually canon in the hit era apparently. <laughs> Duck is a green, medium-sized, odd-shaped engine without a separate coal tender. And like Toby, he looks very individual. However, unlike Toby, the bigger engines respect Duck because of his great western? Since when do they bigger engines like Duck? Since when do they disrespect Toby? What? Oliver and Toad, another green great western engine. Like Percy, Oliver can carry feelings of childlike insecurity. If mom has another baby, she won't want me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because when I think of Oliver being rescued from the scrapyard, yeah, this is definitely his character. What is this? Fergus. Fergus is a traction engine whose main function is to shunt trucks at the cement works. Okay, that is correct. As a shunting engine, he can work at the smelter's yard, the docks, and the quarry, where he'll work with engines like Bill and Ben and Salty. He is suspicious of Diesel, whom he considers newfangled? I mean, yeah, there was Diesel who tricked him or whatever, but, like, I never realized that Fergus, like, considered them newfangled. Wasn't that, like, the plot of, uh, that Rocky's first episode where Edward called him, like, a newfangled nonsense? I, I, I don't know. That's interesting. Okay, Spencer actually has a very good description. Spencer is a top-of-the-range, classy steam engine with a tender. Okay. Uh, Sir Topham Hatt's engine are relieved that Spencer is only a visitor to Sodor. The Duke and Duchess are building a holiday house on the island. Oh, okay, so that's interesting because that plot line would later be used in Hero of the Rails. Okay, now this is very interesting. It says here that there are two Diesels. Now you can interpret this in a few ways. You can either interpret it that Diesel from series 2 or 3 is a completely separate character, or you can interpret it that the first Diesel is actually referring to Diesel 10, since Diesel 10 is mentioned nowhere else in the Bible, and it also mentions here he generally works in most areas but can often be found uh, working inside the scrapyard or smelter yard, which is exactly where he works in uh, Calling All Engines. So, yeah, I'm going to assume that the first diesel is actually Diesel 10. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, Devious Diesel, along with the troublesome trucks, Devious Diesel is a bad guy. So this is interesting. So the way they differentiated uh, Diesel 10 and Devious Diesel was that they called Diesel Devious Diesel. So I'm guessing that's where that phrase comes from. That's that's super interesting. Oh, Harry and Bert. Okay, this is interesting. This also confirms that Ari's name is actually Harry. I guess they must have dropped the A because to make it sound more like an English name, like Ari, you know, instead of Harry. So that that's that's very interesting. Mavis, a quarry based engine originally from the Farquhar Ironworks. Now obviously they've misspelled Farquhar here, but the fact that they called it the Farquhar Ironworks, does that imply that Mavis originally worked in an ironworks before she came to the Farquhar Quarry? That's super interesting. I wonder if that, that would also explain why Ari and Bert work at the quarry as well. That's super interesting. Or sorry, Harry and Bert. <laughs> Mavis has made good friends in Toby and considers Boko her mentor. Uh, okay, that's interesting. Uh, I mean, we never, it's such a shame that we never actually seen that on the show. 
Does that also imply that Boko works at the Farquhar Quarry? That is so interesting. It's funny how like after Buffer Bother from series 6, they just sort of started interpreting the quarry as one location. The, the whole idea of the quarry just starts to become muddled. So it's super interesting that they said that Mavis considers Boko a mentor. It's such a shame we never got to see that. In terms of status in the quarry, she's clearly older and more mature than Bill and Ben, with twice the common sense, and can tell them what to do, whether they listen or not. Okay, so that's interesting. That implies that Mavis, despite being a diesel, is actually older than Bill and Ben. Does this, seriously, does this mean that the, the age thing in Thomas is literally just a metaphor? Is it? I mean, going by this logic, it, it is, so okay. Salty is good at his job. So good, in fact, that he's the only engine, steam, or diesel that can handle trucks. Uh, he has a special knack, which this thing doesn't elaborate into for some reason. Um, Daisy! Again, Daisy! It's so weird to hear all these, like, characters that, like, never appeared in the hit era. Apparently had all these descriptions and they just never used them. Like, what the hell? Anyway, Daisy is a motorized branch line coach. Uh, and the only passenger carrying diesel on the island. Uh, okay. Note, Daisy can't appear on screen of Boko as they share the same chassis. Okay. Boko, the big diesel. Boko is another good diesel, the oldest diesel of the diesels, and is more like an adult than a child. Yeah, that's true. Um, he works a lot with Bill, Ben, and Mavis in the quarry. Okay, so in the hit era canon, apparently Boko works in the Farquhar quarry. That is super interesting. Uh, again, I love the fact that he's apparently a mentor to Mavis. It's, it's just such a shame that we never got to see that. Class 40. This diesel is a large working diesel, usually used in the mainline areas pulling freight or passenger. Uh, I'm pretty sure Class 40 was sent packing, wasn't he? The Paxman. Oh, okay. So instead of Derek, they called him the Paxman. I think one of the reasons they changed that was because I think it had to do with the brand of Paxman, they didn't want to offend it or something, and so I think they changed it to Derek, but don't quote me on that, but I think that's what happened. But um, although he would normally work in the yards or station, he works in the quarries on the island of Sodor. Now it's funny how they don't, despite mentioning that Boko works with Bill and Ben, they don't seem to mention that Paxman worked with them. So does is Paxman like the only diesel left in the old clay pits? Like have they all just gone on? It's funny how they wrote Boko into canon despite not using him, but with Paxman it was just like, I don't know, I guess he works in a quarry or something. This, this is so funny. Okay, on to the narrow gauge engines. Rusty, an orange narrow gauge engine. Rusty's main job is in the quarries, but she also works as a track cleaner. Ah, of course, it all makes sense now. You see, in the original US dub of Tuneful Toots and Duncan and the Old Mine, Rusty was actually referred to as female by Michael Brandon. This actually stems all the way back to series 4, where Brit Allcraft was questioned for the lack of female characters in Thomas, and in retaliation to that made Rusty a neutral character, being neither male nor female and against Audrey's original vision for Rusty. No. I'm guessing somewhere along the pipeline they interpreted Brit making Rusty not male to making Rusty female, hence why the Bible refers to Rusty as she. Reneus, also an orange narrow gauge engine. Uh, is he? Not to split hairs here, but I think he's more of an orangey red rather than a reddy orange, if that makes sense. Scarloe, a red narrow gauge engine and Reneus' best friend. Okay, I must say, out of all the characters I was expecting them to get wrong, I think they actually gave Scarloe a surprisingly good description. Reneus, Scarloe, and Rusty are a great little trio who really enjoy each other. Huh, I never really thought of Rusty as being a part of Scarloe and Reneus' dynamic. However, in Series 6, such as Duncan Duncan or Rusty Saves the Day, they're always shown as this sort of thruple, like how the three of them run the slate quarry or how the three of them uh, have their line closed. So yeah, I guess they are kind of a trio in a way, at least in series six. They're a kind of schoolyard pals who stick up for each other and share their candy without having to be asked. <laughs> okay, that's very weird metaphor, but I kind of see what they're going for there. Sir Handel. Older than the tree pals, Sir Handel is a royal blue steam engine. Uh, he isn't older than them, what are you talking about? Of course, this totally explains why Sir Handel is portrayed as old and wise in the Fearless Freddy episode, rather than Scarloe or Reneus. Why did they think this? Where did they get this from? 
Sir Handel is literally the Greg Heffley of the Thomas and Friends. Now, this is just a funny meme from the Thomas fandom, but it does hold some weight to it. Greg and Sir Handel are kind of similar. He loves to play these sort of mind games uh, with George and Peter Sam, but they always backfire on him. He's not older and wiser at all. What are you talking about? Sir Handel is very friendly and always gives 110%. No, he doesn't. He's Greg Heffley. What are you talking about? Duncan, a light ochre narrow gauge steamer who is similar in nature to James. I mean, I guess Duncan and James are kind of similar. Duke, I don't know how, but somehow Duke is canon in the hit era, apparently. Ochre in color, Duke is a mythical character. I guess Duke is a mythical character in the hit era. I mean, they definitely told stories about him, but he was real, wasn't he? Peter Sam, a proud pea green engine, okay, keen to work, uh, he gets upset if things don't go his way. Yeah, I guess that's kind of true. I was expecting the descriptions of the Scarlow engines to be worse, but honestly, these descriptions weren't half bad, uh, except the Sir Handel one. That, like, what were you thinking with that one? <laughs> Sir Topham Hatt. Sir Topham Hatt is an old-fashioned boss. As judge and jury, he's very useful when it comes to resolving stories. He doesn't need to explain himself or justify himself. Uh, okay, that sounds a little dictatorial, if you ask me, but whatever. As a businessman, Sir Topham Hatt is capable of making decisions that affect the engines emotionally, making them work with diesel, pushing Gordon to shunt freight, cutting back on the number of washdowns they can have. Yeah, well, it's nice to know that the engines are consistently at the mercy of him. And if you don't fall in line, the evil dictator will cut down your daily rations. <laughs> what? Lady Hatt. Lady Hatt is Sir Topham Hatt's wife. Though we don't see her all that often, she believes in modernizing. To be honest, we don't really know that much about Lady Hatt, but I'm guessing that the idea of modernizing they got was from the episode Sir Topham Hatt's Holiday, where she comments that Annie and Clarabel look like beach huts. You know, this is actually kind of interesting, you know, having the fat controller is this like, uh, old school railway controller and having Lady Hatt as the new modernization controller. It's sort of like a yin and yang, I, I like that. Drivers and firemen. The status of drivers and firemen have changed from series 1 to 7. Previously, the drivers had to be mentioned when describing actions or movements that the engines made. But this has changed. Now you don't need to mention the drivers and firemen unless their presence is material to a story. Ugh. All that realism of the drivers and crew, all the realism of the engines being operated by crew, all that's gone now. It's a complete disconnect from what Thomas is. The realism factor is now totally disregarded thanks to this Bible. Oh my god, this Bible, man. But remember, try not to give the human models long sentences. It's difficult to make them look interesting because, frankly, they don't do much except point. <laughs> well, at least they're, at least they have some sense of irony. <laughs> Annie and Clarabel. As characters, Annie and Clarabel don't tend to say much, but they are popular with the audience and look good in scenes. Oh yeah, Annie and Clarabel are completely superfluous to the story, but they look good, so keep them around, I guess. Oh, thank God they gave Annie and Clarabel some more stuff to do in the CGI series, because honestly, Annie and Clarabel are like Thomas's rock. Elizabeth, the vintage Stentinel lorry. She's a stubborn, proud, and a touch regal. If she were a person, she'd be Judy Dench's Queen Elizabeth. But I know something of a woman in a man's profession. Yes, by God, I do know about that. Interesting that Elizabeth's name actually holds some contextual weight to her character. An actual decent description there. Bulgy, the double-decker bus. He is a hen house in a field close to the bridge he's damaged. A visual reminder of how not to behave. Now I wonder when this Bible was written, because nowhere here does it mention that Bulgy was turned into a mobile vegetable stand. I guess this was written during the production of Series 7? Interesting. Bulstrode, a seagoing barge formerly used to ship loads of rocks. He would like to be refloated and be really useful again. Could you imagine if they had actually done that episode? That would have been crazy. Old Slow Coach and Thumper, again, it's crazy to hear these characters who only appeared once or were apparently canon in the hit era. They just never got around to them. That's super interesting. So yeah, that's pretty much everything from the Bible. There were some things I had to leave out because otherwise we'd be here for 13 hours, but there are some pretty cool stuff that I left out that you could probably check out, like Godred the Impactor, for example. But, but yeah, 
Do I think this Bible destroyed Thomas? Well, it's complicated. I don't think it's the sole thing that caused Thomas's downfall, but I do think it certainly contributed to it. Things like Henry needing special coal, Rusty being female, Sir Handel not being Greg Hefley, Toby, Emily and Edward being flat out wrong. It just got so many things wrong with Thomas. While I don't like this Bible, I do think it was fun to go through it with you all and learn something new. It certainly put to bed some of the issues that we all had with the show and so for that, I'm glad that we have the Bible. The link to it is down below. Thank you all so much for watching and a special thanks to the 5,000 people who subscribed to me. I never in a million years would have thought that I'd get 5,000 subscribers for a Thomas the Tank Engine channel. I really appreciate it. This video is dedicated to all 5,000 of you who subscribed. Thank you all so much for watching and there'll be so much more coming in the future. Bye bye! <laughs>